One application of Dalton's law is to determine the individual partial pressures of gases given a mixture and its total pressure. We're going to be using a quantity called the mole fraction, which is dimensionless, so it has no unit, and it gives us the ratio of the number of moles of one component to the total number of moles. So we can sort of think about it like a percentage without multiplying by 100. We use the symbol XA to represent the mole fraction of gas A. And it's determined by taking the moles of gas A and dividing by the total number of moles of gas in the sample. The pressures will also be in the same ratio. So you could also determine the mole fraction by taking the individual partial pressure of gas A and dividing that by the total pressure. And so you're going to see from that that we can find the individual partial pressure by taking the mole fraction and multiplying by the total pressure. Let's look at an example here. So if we have this mixture of gases of helium and nitrogen, two of the particles are helium out of a total of seven. So the mole fraction of the helium here is two over seven or 0.2857. So if you think of that in terms of percentage, it's like it's 28.57% of the gas is helium. And so then if we think in terms of the total pressure, it therefore makes sense that if the moles make up 28.57% of the total gas, then the pressure, the partial pressure of that gas will also make up 28% of the total pressure. So in turn, the nitrogen in this case will make up the rest. So the mole fraction for nitrogen, we could calculate individually by doing the individual moles divided by the total. But we also know that the mole fraction of all of the gases is going to sum to 1, much like the total percentage of all of the items will equal 100. So in this case, the mole fraction for nitrogen is 0.7143. So that's the fraction that nitrogen is making up of the total pressure. So if you look at another example here, just to give you a visual of the individual gases and then the gases in a mixture, if we have this sample of hydrogen gas at 2.9 atmospheres and this sample of helium gas at 7.2 atmospheres. When we combine those gases, the total pressure is going to equal the sum of the pressures. So that's what Dalton's law tells us. And what we're going to do here is we're going to look at the mole fraction for the helium and hydrogen in this scenario. So on the bottom, the values that we're given here are the moles. So we have 0.6 moles of hydrogen, 1.5 moles of helium, and a total of 2.1 moles of gas in our mixture. So what we're going to do is sub in the values from the diagram and look at the mole fractions. So if we take the partial pressure of the helium and divide it by the total pressure, as well as the number of moles of helium and divide it by the total number of moles, we will in both cases obtain the mole fraction of helium, which in this case is 70, 0.7143. So essentially helium is making up 71.43% of the sample and it's contributing 71.43% of the pressure. The hydrogen, we can do the same. If we take the partial pressure of the hydrogen and divide it by the total pressure, that's going to be equal to the number of moles of hydrogen divided by the total number of moles and it's our mole fraction. So my mole fraction for hydrogen is 0.2857. And like we discussed before, the mole fractions should add up to a total of 1.
So let's look at an example. We have a mixture of gases that contain 4.46 moles of neon, 0 0.740 moles of argon, and 2.15 moles of xenon. We're going to calculate the partial pressure of the gases given that the total pressure is equal to 2 atmospheres. So the total number of moles that we're working with here is 7.35. And we know that the partial pressure of a gas A is going to equal the mole fraction of that gas times its total pressure. So we need the mole fraction of each individual gas. So for neon, the number of moles is 4.46 out of the total. So the mole fraction for neon is 0 0.6068. So the partial pressure of neon, the pressure that it's contributing to the total pressure, is 1.21 atmospheres. We can have the same solution for xenon, finding the partial pressure by first calculating the mole fraction and then multiplying it by the total pressure. For the argon, we can do the same thing. So this is the partial pressure of the argon. Now we could have just used the total pressure and subtracted. I know my total pressure is two atmospheres. And so if I know two of the individual partial pressures, I can use that total pressure to calculate the third. But one of the reasons why I like to do it separately and calculate its mole fraction from scratch and calculate its partial pressure from scratch is so that I can check my work. I can check my work because I can take the sum of the calculated partial pressures and see that it does in fact equal my total pressure. And I can also take the sum of the mole fractions and see that it totals 1 as I would expect.